I have avoided the Crypto.com Visa card for years. I mean, 8% cash back seemed too good to be true. It seemed like a Ponzi scheme. The whole staking thing was confusing. They say no annual fee, but $400,000 of staking sounds a lot like a fee to me, and it sounds ridiculously expensive to get a debit card. I mean, even with free Spotify and Netflix and Prime, even with airport lounge access, $400,000 just doesn't make sense. Or does it? Hey there, Dave here. In this video, all of the reasons that I avoided Crypto.com's Visa card for years, my take on the pros and cons, and the real reason that I finally did get the 5% back rose gold version of the card. And surprisingly, it's not for the 5% back. Let's start with why I avoided this card. And there are a bunch of reasons, really. Online reviews were mixed. People were saying that they were waiting forever to even get a card sent to them and that there was really no customer support. I mean, Reddit was full of posts from people who had problems, but Reddit usually is. For me, the main reason was how confusing and expensive it all seems. This is what their product grid looks like. That's a lot. Five tiers, seven different cards with various benefits and percentages and staking. I wanna do a review at some point covering each of the tiers and what you get and who I think the right type of person for each of the tiers is. But at first glance, you give them $400,000 to get a card with 8% back on purchases. In my mind, the quick math, at 8%, you'd have to spend $5 million to get $400,000 back in rewards. I mean, sure, it has free Spotify and Netflix, but it would take forever to consume $400,000 worth of streaming content. That's what I used to think, stay with me. And if you think that looks confusing, this is what it used to look like way back in ancient times, as in the summer of 2020. The stake amounts used to be quoted in terms of CRO coin. I mean, what's a million CRO coin worth? Way back in mid 2020, it was harder to find a place where you could buy and sell crypto.com coin other than their own website. Basically the whole thing was confusing and set off red flags. And when something seems too good to be true, then I learned more about DeFi and what staking was all about. The concept was becoming more mainstream. And if you're new to the idea of staking, you can kind of think of it as a modern day version of a bank CD. You lock up access to some money in exchange for a predictable earning rate. And at the end of the CD's term, you get the original money back plus interest. Of course, traditional CDs these days pay about 0.0% and the crypto world is paying 3% or 10% or 15%, which really makes no sense, but I'm getting more used to the idea. But unlike a bank CD, the money you're locking up is in a cryptocurrency that can fluctuate way more in value than the US dollar does. So with more risk, it makes more sense they're able to give bigger rewards. So if you think like a time traveler who went back to the 80s and saw this new idea of a cashback rewards credit card, which by the way, Discover Card actually invented the concept of credit card rewards back in 1986. <laughs> Imagine if you could only get one of these magical cashback credit cards if you put money into a CD at the bank, but it's the 80s, so that CD paid like 12% interest, so that's cool. Back to the future, well, really the recent past, early November 2021, Crypto.com coin, the CRO, was gaining in popularity. It was making its way up the list on coin market cap. It had reached more than a $6 billion market cap by then. I'd just seen Matt Damon in a commercial for Crypto.com, and CRO had just been added as a currency that you could buy and sell on Coinbase Pro. So I decided that all of those things seemed to signal it was time for me to buy some CRO. My crypto portfolio is primarily Bitcoin and Ethereum with a little Solana and some other Ethereum disruptors. So crypto.com coin fit right in with my crypto strategy, but I still avoided the black obsidian card. 8% would be great, but there's just not enough difference. I mean, they also added a private jet partnership, which as far as I can tell, you get a bottle of champagne when you book and pay for a flight on a private jet. And the only other thing is 10% off of Airbnb, and that is capped at $100 a month. But remember, it's 8% off anyway, because it's 8% off of everything. So that's an extra 2% on Airbnb, but capped at a bottle of champagne when you pay for a private jet. Or you can get everything else exactly the same for one-tenth the cost. Of course, not long after I staked my 40 K, news broke that Crypto.com was buying the naming rights to the center formerly known as Staples in LA. My investment more than doubled in a couple of weeks, which I definitely didn't see coming. If I had, I obviously would have invested 400K and gotten the black card. But looking back even further, I wish I had taken this card seriously. Back when their website looked like this, that 1 million CRO cost less than $100,000, and that would be worth around $500,000 today. I could have unstaked my initial investment and let the profits pay for the card. There 
There is one other difference that I found between these two cards, and it's actually not included on the grid. It's buried in their help site and in their terms and conditions. And I'll tell you what that is when I reveal my real reason for getting this card in a minute. But I do want to share my overall pros and cons for not just the 400k black card or the 40k rose gold or white cards, but really for the program as a whole. As far as the pros and cons go, I do see both sides. I'm becoming a fan of what Crypto.com is doing, but it's not all good. I'll start with my pros though. The cashback is amazing. There's no limit on earnings, no categories, no annual fee other than that staking, and the rewards are deposited into your wallet instantly. Let's talk about that cashback a little more because 8% back on everything is insane. But really, only if you would want to invest $400,000 into CRO coin anyway. The same with the 5% rate. I personally think of it as getting a card with 5% back as a perk for investing in CRO coin and not the other way around of making an investment just to get the card. Which plays into my real reason for getting the card, that in a minute. But 5% back is so good. I mean, it's right up there with some of my highest earning cards, like the Amex with five times points on airfare and some hotels. I've been paying $550 a year for that card. This card has 5% on everything with no annual fee. I have the B of A card for 5.25% back on dining, but that is capped and I blow past the cap every single quarter. And because of that, I just calculated it. My effective earn rate last year ended up only being 2.86%. So I'm retiring that card. Even their 3% tier beats my old 2.625% back everything else card. And on that card, I was paying a $95 annual fee and I had to keep $100,000 at Bank of America just to earn that rate, which kind of makes the crypto.com card seem like a bargain with a $4,000 staking requirement to get 3% back on everything. If you're looking for an invite code, you will get an extra $25 when you use one. So I'll put mine down in the description and I'll also link to whatever the best current offer is I can find. And I'll keep that link up to date. If you go to heythere.com, TV slash crypto, that'll redirect you. As far as other pros, it has perks for things that I actually use, like Netflix, Spotify, and Amazon, which, by the way, way better than what Amex is giving me, Peacock, Audible, and I think a tenth of an Equinox membership. The card also has airport lounge access. They're doing that through Lounge Key, which at least at my home airport, those are the same lounges that the Priority Pass will give you, which arguably those are not as good as the Centurion lounges. But have you been to a Centurion lounge lately? Because they have been so overcrowded. They have actually recognized that and Amex is going to start charging to bring a guest with you to a Centurion lounge next year. So those are my pros. Now onto the cons. And this first one's kind of a big deal for me. I am a cashback purist and this card does not give you cashback in dollars, but rather CRO coin. And I personally do like crypto.com coin as an investment, but considering the staking requirement, I don't know that I need more of it. It is easy to convert it to USD it's just kind of a hassle to remember to actually do it. But then once you do, you can actually earn 14% interest on that USDC. So it's kind of a pro and a con. Also, this is a prepaid debit card. I know that some people prefer debit cards, but I think it's just going to take some time for me to get used to the idea. I have everything in my life set to auto pay. I know I'm going to forget to top up the card and that I'm going to have charges get declined. I'm actually going to set a reminder to myself on my phone now. Once you have topped up and put money on this card, you can't move the money around. You can only spend it or withdraw it from an ATM. There's also no interest on the money that you load onto the card. And there are no statements or annual summaries, which I really don't look at those for my other cards, but it's nice to know they're there if you need them. With crypto.com, you can log into the app and see your transactions. You can also download CSV files, but there's no categorization to see dining versus other categories. And there's also no integration into Mint or Truebill or any of the Plaid based services. Also, when you do download your transactions, they split it into two separate files, one for your spending transactions and another for your rewards. So if you want to see them together, you have to somehow merge it manually. I rarely look at statements, but I do like to keep tabs on my spending using an app and the crypto.com app doesn't have the level of detail that I'm used to. But my biggest con is that I can't figure out for sure if crypto.com or really any of these new crypto DeFi platforms are legit and not some kind of giant Ponzi scheme. They are a foreign company. They're a private company. There is very limited transparency into their financial conditions. They clearly do have a marketing budget. They're growing fast. And I guess other than some reported outages and customer service that could be improved, their tech seems very sound. There was a reported hack a few days ago, but the CEO tweeted that no customer money was lost. And I haven't personally experienced any problems creating an account or moving money around. I guess when I signed up, I was able to get my virtual credit card within a 
day, and then they shipped the physical one two weeks later. As far as DeFi platforms go, I think that Crypto.com seems legit. Now for the real reason that I got this card. And it's not because I needed a new metal credit card or free Netflix or even the 5% back. Those are great, I will take them. But the real reason I got this card is to make more money in the Crypto.com Earn program. They pay up to 8.5% on Bitcoin and Ethereum, 14% on stable coins like USDC. And the way to get their highest rates is by also investing in and holding their CRO coin in your wallet, which I wanted to invest in anyway. By the way, even without any staking, they're still paying pretty competitive rates. Stable coins are still in the 6 to 10% range, but you get an extra 2% for staking $4,000 and 2% more for staking $40,000. I basically picked the $40,000 version of the Visa card, not for the card itself, but because $40,000 is the level that gives you the highest rates in the EARN program. You do not get better rates at the $400,000 level. By the way, while my 40K is being staked for this card, they're also paying me 12% interest on that staked CR row. I know, still sounds like a giant Ponzi scheme, but I really don't think it is. I hope. But wait, there's more. At both the $40,000 and $400,000 levels, you also get an additional 2% in CRO in addition to what you're staking. So for example, I could stake a stable coin like USDC and earn 12% interest in USDC plus an additional 2% in CRO, which I could then convert to USDC too, or just let it ride in CRO and see what happens. 14% beats the S&P's average return. It beats most of the stocks that I've been invested in. It is incredible. I mentioned there was one other difference between the 400K black card and the 40K rose gold or white cards. And that is also related to the EARN program. Because without one of those cards, the EARN program is capped at a half million dollars. But at the $400,000 level, you can put up to $2 million into EARN. And at the $40,000 level, the card that I have lets me put up to $1 million into EARN. Those are such high numbers, I know. But if you're at the level in life where you're investing $400,000 into CRO, you could quite possibly also have $2 million that you would like to put into USDC and earn 14% interest you'd be generating $280,000 a year in income. That's $23,000 a month, more than $5,000 a week. Not bad. I have not put the million dollar max to the test yet, but when I do, sounds like a great topic for a future video. I will keep you posted on how it's going, so do subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow me on Twitter for updates. But for now, that is the latest from here. I'm Dave Hansen. I will see you back there for the next Hey There, Dave here. That's why I went with the 40K version, the that's why we went with the 40K version. This is, this is not gonna work.